Good evening, everyone. It is seven o'clock, so we are going to go ahead and begin our fireside chat. Um, welcome and thank you so much for joining us this evening uh, to talk about beginning your second century of service with Lions Vision Services. A couple of quick housekeeping notes. Uh, we are recording this, as you probably noticed when you uh, joined us this evening, so you will get a link to view the recording of this uh, in a few days, um, so don't worry if you um, brought a pad and paper, feel free to use it, but don't feel like you have to keep up with everything we're saying. Uh, you will get the recording from this to view later. Also, um, ask questions. Some of you have already shared some questions by email, and we'll uh, be answering those during our program, as well as during the open uh, question and answer session at the end of uh, tonight's program. But we want to hear from you, and uh, certainly some of the things you hear tonight might prompt additional questions as well. Uh, you can share those questions. Uh, we would prefer you to submit them using the Q&A function. If you um, submit questions to that at the bottom of your screen using the Q&A feature, that'll help us keep questions organized. Uh, but you can also put them in the chat as well. And we'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the program uh, so that we can uh, make sure that we leave you with answers to all the things that you want to know more about. I'm very pleased to introduce our guest speakers this evening. Joining me tonight is Jay O'Dell, uh, who joined the Lions Vision Services Board of Directors in 2019 and has served as chair of the board for two years now, uh, during which time he led the creation and the implementation of a new strategic plan. He worked at Blackbaud for over 17 years, during which time he ran the nonprofit business enterprise unit. And today he is a consultant for numerous nonprofit and technology companies, um, both locally and around the world. Um, we're very sad to share that um, one of our guest speakers, Diane Papool, had um, an unexpected health situation come up this evening and will not be able to join us live, but we do have some remarks that we will um, share from her uh, during the program. Diane served as LVS board chair in 2016 and has stayed closely involved ever since, uh, serving as a passionate advocate for LVS uh, among South Carolina Lions clubs. And Diane, along with her husband, Brian, are currently engaged in the Thompson and Associates process now uh, with LVS, which you'll learn more about tonight. She remains an active member of the Myrtle Beach Lions Club and is also involved in several other local nonprofit organizations. Uh, we will be able to hear from a surprise guest, uh, Council Chair Jim Barbary and his wife, Hope Barbary, will be joining us uh, briefly this evening. Uh, in addition to his role as council chair, Jim serves on the board of directors for Lions Vision Services, and Hope also serves as multiple district global membership chair, helping to promote membership in Lions clubs throughout the state of South Carolina. Uh, we hope that you will join them and us at our state convention uh, that they're hosting in Columbia April 5th and 6th of 2024. And you'll get to hear a little bit from Jim and Hope about their Thompson and Associates experience as well. And we also have uh, Beth Wingard with us tonight. Um, Beth has worked with LVS for just over a year now to bring the unique Thompson and Associates process to the LVS community, igniting new passion for the LVS mission. Beth finds great joy in genuine connection and relationship with nonprofits and their supporters. She has, as you will see tonight, a natural gift for forging meaningful relationships and building value in her service to others. Um, and just to show you how small the world is, uh, years and years ago, uh, Beth was also <clears throat> the account manager for Lions Vision Services at BB&T Bank uh, at another time and place. And she also still currently works at the Lexington Medical Center Foundation, uh, which is also um, a grateful um, funder for Lions Vision Services' work in Lexington and Richland counties. Um, and I'm your host, Daniel Prohaska, President and CEO of Lions Vision Services and Second Vice District Governor for District 32C here in South Carolina. So why are we here now that you know who is here? I want to lay out a quick chronology for you that brings us uh, up to the present in a um, succinct and I think helpful way. On June 7th, 1917, the very first meeting of Lions International took place at Hotel La Salle in Chicago, Illinois. On April 11th, 1922, Lions came to the state of South Carolina with the chartering of the Columbia Lions Club. 
Just a few years later, on June 30th, 1925, Helen Keller delivered a speech at the Lions International Convention in Cedar Point, Ohio, that forever changed the course of our organization. During that iconic speech that many of you tonight are well familiar with, Helen Keller charged Lions to be Knights of the Blind in the crusade against darkness. At a time when the public perception of the blind and visually impaired uh, was anything but positive, Helen Keller was a champion for those uh, who couldn't be a champion for themselves and did so uh, with poise and with effectiveness. And it's because of Helen Keller's charge that Lions focused their efforts on vision. And it's because of that focus on vision that on June 24th, 1969, the Lions of South Carolina chartered the South Carolina Lions Site Conservation Association, which is the organization that later became Lions Vision Services as we know it today. And while our mission has changed over the years, our unwavering commitment to Helen Keller's legacy, as well as our intrinsic tie to the South Carolina Lions community have been the bedrock and the foundation of all that we've done. These dates mean that in 2017, we celebrated the centennial anniversary of Lions International. And in uh, 2022, we celebrated the centennial anniversary of South Carolina Lions just a couple years ago now. Uh, and it means that we have a distinguished and a strong community of leaders that have brought us through our first century of service. Certainly included among those leaders are the LVS Board of Directors, which includes 14 professionals from around the state. Uh, interestingly enough, 43% of whom are now uh, business professionals outside the Lions Club community, but dedicated and committed relentlessly to the Lions mission of helping the blind and visually impaired. As you're about to hear, our new strategic plan in 2023 is the North Star at Lions Vision Services guiding our annual operations. Achieving this plan will be a monumental undertaking and will only be the first part of a more comprehensive effort to achieve an ambitious 10-year vision. That vision is LVS being the largest nonprofit eye surgery program in South Carolina, delivering over 800 sight-saving eye surgeries annually to more than 500 individuals in need. As we embark on this second century of service with Lions in South Carolina, achieving these goals will take our collective social, moral, intellectual, relational, and financial capital to succeed. That's what tonight is all about, unlocking our potential for our next century of service to ensure that the Lions' best years are still ahead and that LVS is equipped to steward the Lions' legacy for generations to come. So here to start our conversation with the current LVS position is our board chairman, Jay O'Dell. Welcome, Jay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Daniel. Good evening, everyone, and certainly appreciate you joining us on this evening. You know everyone has busy lives. So during my time on the board, it's you know, I've seen an impressive and exciting milestone that LVS has literally doubled the number of sites saving eye surgeries that we perform annually. So on one hand, that sounds great. It makes me very proud. We were able to impact twice as many people. And I will say we're on track to have another record-breaking year in our current fiscal year, which ends in June. But then I thought about it. On the other hand, that means that there are twice as many people who need eye sight-saving surgeries and can't afford to pay for them. That's an increase just over the last several years. So I did a little research on the topic and I came across an article um, in the National Library of Medicine and they're projecting that the number of people who will need cataract or other type of sight saving surgeries will double over the next 15 to 20 years. It's a problem globally. It's a problem here in the state of South Carolina. And there's going to continue to be a large number of people who can't afford these surgeries or they're at risk of losing their sight. And it's been shown, as I'm sure you can picture and may have heard, uh, vision impairment leads to other issues that impact quality of life, mobility issues, diabetes, and other conditions. So as Daniel referenced, um, the LBS board and staff uh, worked and recently completed a, uh, an updated five-year strategic plan. And there are two components of this plan that led us to consider a planned giving program, which is what one of the things we're here to talk about tonight. So the first of 
there, there, there were, again, two, two of the five components. Um, the first was increasing engagement with South Carolina <clears throat> Lions and Lions Clubs. And that, that's one of the five key pillars of our strategic plan. We take the trust of Lions very seriously. We also see it as an opportunity to build and strengthen relationships with our supporters in South Carolina Lions. Secondly, because of the increasing need for our services, we need to significantly grow our funding so that we can afford to serve the growing number of people <clears throat> who need our services for eye surgeries and our other programs. I mean, simply put, if we're going to achieve those numbers that Daniel referenced at 800 surgeries annually, we, we have to significantly grow our fundraising. If we're going to double the number of surgeries again, we have to double the amount of funding. One of the key ways to grow our funding is to create a program that enables individuals and families to contribute to LBS over the long term, such as through their estate plan. We chose to partner with Thompson and Associates to offer a process to work with our supporters for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we felt it was important <clears throat> to have people involved who are very knowledgeable and experienced with plan giving, understanding why people give back, <clears throat> why they serve others, understanding various types of giving vehicles and tax implications. And secondly, we thought it was really important to have a third party lead the discussions so that it maintains privacy for people's financial numbers. That's one of the things that you'll hear is that it's the, the, the process that we're talking about here is it's private um, <clears throat> with your information remaining secure. So I'll, I'll summarize my opening comments on, on, on why we're here and why I'm here in a couple of sentences. Again, I'll thank you again for, your, for attending tonight. Your interest in the program is very appreciated. And we created this program because of the need for our services has never been higher. And all the research and projections shows it's going to continue to increase over the years. So we know that everyone who becomes a lion believes in service to others. So we feel this is a really great program to help continue that service, even after our time here on Earth is gone. So uh, we have more information to come. Um, you know, I'm going to hand the, the ball over to Beth Wingard, who's going to talk a little bit about Thompson & Associates and describe the process. And then, as Daniel mentioned, we'll, we'll, then we'll come back and talk about um, and hear from a couple of people who've gone through the process. Thank you. Well, Jay, thank you so much. And I'm so pleased to be here. Um, tonight actually is my 21st wedding anniversary. So that just tells you how important I believe this conversation is with each of you. My husband might actually say the same. Um, so I'm just going to start with some um, some reference points for you tonight. Um, how many of you really, really love your main squeeze? That significant person in your life that means more to you than anyone else in the world, be that your spouse or a child or your dearest friend. How many of you really, really love your children? even your grown children, and you didn't believe when you first held them in your arms the day they were born that you could possibly love anything more. And yet you do, because your heart makes room to grow. And then, wow, when uh, those grandchildren burst on the scene and steal your heart, how did that feel? Maybe you've had a little different experience of falling in love, a breakthrough experience and working alongside others with your sleeves rolled up in service to a beloved organization and a mission that you really care for. I'd like to pose a question. Do you know for sure without any hesitation that you have done all that you can to prepare to demonstrate that love to them through the passing of your estate? Have you really taken time to consider if your plan reflects what you believe and what you feel about money? I have a friend, a fellow associate named Jeremy Farr that asked this question in a little different way when he meets with his planning clients. If you were to win the lottery, what needs would you address in your family and in your community? What problems would you solve? Does your state plan reflect those same values? 
So I want you to take just a couple of seconds to think about that. What do you give your time to and your blessings? Not that which you are required to do, but that which you really do with your heart. I think about family. I think about my friends. And I think about causes that are dear to me. The board of directors and the leadership of LVS have chosen to offer this unique blessing to Lions Club members and to LVS supporters. And so I'd like to take a little time tonight to tell you a little more about it. So if you've been curious, maybe you've glanced at the video, wondered what this is really all about. I'm going to pull back the veil a little bit for you guys. So I've had the distinct joy of meeting with several Lions member families over this past year and unequivocally, unequivocally, it's a hard word, each and every one of them has been special to me and touched my heart in some way. I've had uh, family dogs on my lap. I've met brand new grandbabies. I've enjoyed barbecue, shared beet salads, hot Canadian maple syrup, and I've teared up with them as they shared stories of heartbreak and pride talking about their loved ones. So we talk about the things that really matter, not just where the money will go, as you might do in a more typical estate planning setting. Um, today, an article came out actually from our founder, Eddie Thompson, and in it, he quoted something that he often shares with different audiences. And I thought I might just read that to y'all. So I'm going to take a second to share this with you because I think it's pretty relevant for tonight. What we teach our children and grandchildren about the purpose, meaning, and value of money will be far more significant than the amount of money that we leave them. The most important inheritances then are non-financial, intentional time together, financial mentoring, and a sense of value and personal worth independent from impressing others with one's wealth or importance. So my work with Thompson and Associates involves visiting once a month for about an hour over about four to six, maybe seven, eight meetings in those months to do some basic estate planning education and pre-planning. So I meet with individuals and families to take a good hard look, to slow down and have some deeper conversations conversations about your life experiences, your family values, and your family dynamics, which can be very sticky in some cases, and the various blessings, also known as your assets, that you have to work with to pass along your treasure in a manner that is consistent with what you believe. I explore with families different ways to approach solving family issues to help you see your opportunities to give in a more impactful way and a wise way to your children and your loved ones. I also help you understand where your current plan will go, meaning how much will go to your family now how much will go to the government in the form of taxes, and how much is going to charity if you have any plan for that. Then we may look at some recommended ideas that might change that picture to better align with your priorities, to take care of family, to save on taxes, and to make charitable provisions in the smartest way if that is something you desire to do. It's really important that I share with all of you that there isn't a hidden agenda. 
LVS brought our program in knowing that for most of us, we have something in our portfolio called social capital. It's money that we will not be able to pass to our loved ones because it will go to the government unless it's used for charitable purposes. And it is their hope that if you're inclined to that, that among the organizations that you would consider um, for support, that you might consider LVS in your plans. But it's equally important that you understand that even though this gift comes at no cost to you, that there is no obligation for you to make such a gift, nor is there actually an expectation on you that you will do so. I will never solicit you during the course of our visits and anything we discuss will remain confidential. Nothing is shared with the organization. Daniel Prohaska can, in fact, beg me to tell him what we talk about in our visits, and I will be mums the word. Whatever you might wish to do and share is entirely up to you. So my role and the job that I take quite seriously is that when that day comes that one of you is not here, that we've done everything that we can do and should do to ensure that those you love and care for the most, that main squeeze is taken care of. I help you learn and choose the best path for you. And we do so at a pace that allows you not to feel any pressure in making those decisions. You are not on the attorney's clock. <laughs> And that will help you be far more prepared if you choose to meet with your attorney to make any changes. So I work with your advisors as needed, not in place of. My company does not sell products. We do not manage investments and we do not draft the documents. Many of you may already actually have a plan. Maybe you did it a couple of years ago or 10 years ago. I and my team can be an objective second set of eyes to review your current plan. We help you uncover any missed opportunities, undiscovered joy, or we simply give you reassurance that your plan is the best plan to meet your goals and your objectives. And perhaps you find you've made a new friend and had some helpful conversations along the way. So as I close this evening, I do want to leave you with some hard questions that you may need to ask yourself. Are you sure that you've done all you can to minimize or eliminate tax in your estate? Have you recently gone through a divorce or been widowed? Are your beneficiaries up to date? Do you have a blended family? That can take some sophisticated planning. Are you sure that you have properly planned for a spendthrift child or a special needs child? If you have a revocable trust, are you absolutely certain that it is fully funded? We can help you answer those questions. So tonight, I would like to personally invite each of you to consider taking that first step have a first meeting with me and explore this and see if it's right for you and for your family. And if you don't decide to move forward, perhaps you learned something special that you needed to hear in that time with me. And I promise I will not get my feelings hurt. So as Daniel mentioned earlier, we do have some other guests that would like to share their story with you of walking through this Thompson experience with me. And I think they can tell you better than I can say in my own words. So at this point, I would like to pass the microphone back to Daniel and let him continue our stories. Thank you, Beth. Um, we do have uh, Lion Hope Barbary in the audience tonight. And we'd like to start with um, letting you hear directly from someone who is uh, not only a, a passionate ally of Lions Vision Services, but um, a lion that we all know and love. Um, so Hope, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Jim, thank you as well. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? 
we can hear you great. Okay, that's good. I've just come out of a meeting, and so I'm sitting in my car, <laughs> and hopefully everything is going to work fine here. Um, I am pinch hitting for Diane Papoul, and I'm sorry that she um, has fallen ill, but I am glad to be able to um, speak for just a minute or two about our process, Jim and I, um, a little bit of background. We adopted a special needs child when he was three and a half. He's now almost 40. And he is not self-sufficient. He is still dependent upon us. And so we had talked for um, a couple of years now as we get older and he's older um, that we needed to do something to assure that he would be taken care of and not lose his benefits that he has currently. And maybe a special needs trust or something like that, but we just hadn't gotten around to it. So Daniel called Jim and offered him the opportunity us the opportunity to meet with Thompson and Associates, Beth Templeton from Thompson and Associates about estate planning. So we talked about it and initially we had a little trepidation about it. Um, you know, we were going to lay out our financial life in front of somebody that we did not know. And um, if you've ever been to um, a timeshare or somebody trying to sell you something, you think, oh, is this going to be like a timeshare where, you know, you're sweating bullets and, you know, it won't let you go before you buy something. And we just really didn't know for sure. But we knew Daniel and uh, we also knew LVS and the work that they do. And um, we wanted to be a part of that. And so we said, OK, we met with Beth immediately. She became like one of our family members. She mentioned that she got to meet grandchildren. That was probably our grandchild she was talking about. If he cried or he spit up, he had to go with us because we were keeping him. It never fazed her. You know, she always wanted to know about our grandchild and how he was doing. The one thing that I loved about the process with Beth was not only was she approachable, not only did she become like um, a member of our family, um, but she gave gave the first thing she did was she gave us a values in a uh, questionnaire and we were to take it home and we we didn't even talk about money the first time anything just a values questionnaire she explained how they worked we went home jim was to do his and not let me see his and i was to do my values questionnaire and not let him see mine and We'd been married almost 40 years, so we were pretty clear on how we believed about things and what we wanted, but there were a few surprises, <laughs> and when we came back together, Beth went over that with us, and I loved that process because it really gave us a basis for what we were going to do the rest of the time when we were meeting. It was not just, oh, well, show me your money, and let's see how much we can get out of you. It was just like Beth was explaining a few minutes ago, what are your values? What do you want to do for your family? How do you want to support, you know, what legacy do you want to leave? And, and, and how can you maximize that, that you're giving to your family? And, and what about your special needs son and how will he be taken care of? And um, what can I do to help with that process? And it was not until way into the meetings that we that we got into the actual financial part of it but the process that we went through with her was just absolutely eye-opening and one of the best things I think that we've done in a long time as far as providing for our family and looking at things through you know some help with um with what with our values and what we wanted to do so when we finished the whole process um, after several meetings with Beth, um, she gave us a packet of information. I mean, it was, you know, everything was spelled out, what we wanted for the special needs trust, how the rest of our family was going to be taken care of through the family trust. And she had based all that upon our meetings and what we had told her. We took it to a lawyer to finalize it, to get it legalized and make sure, you know, everything was exactly like we wanted it. And he was blown away. He said, I cannot, I, I, I've never, you know, nobody's ever come into my office and had this type of paperwork already done and ready to go. 
Now, it did not translate into a discount on his price, for, <laughs> unfortunately, for us to um, have already done that. But he really thought that that was, a, he, he just, he said he had never seen uh, somebody come in and, and do that. So have that kind of work done. So we appreciate that opportunity. Um, we know the great work that LVS does, and we would recommend Beth and this process to anyone and she is absolutely correct she does did she put no pressure on us to to give anything or to do anything a certain way she gave us information we made our decision we told her what we wanted she came back the next month she would show us what she had worked on for us and then she'd say she said now is this what you want and if we need to change anything we can and she gave us information I highly recommend the process. And like she said, even though you may not, you may have an initial meeting and decide you want, don't want to go forward, although I doubt that would happen, um, it's worth it's worth getting together and seeing what she has to offer. So I highly recommend it. And I thank you for the opportunity, Daniel, of giving that to us and calling us and inviting us to be a part of that. Well, hope it is absolutely our pleasure. And um, Beth is sending you hearts through through um, the, the screen there. And we just thank you and Jim so much for, for taking the time and for, for hearing us out. We thank you for all that you're doing and, and thank you for helping us keep the Lions legacy going. So absolutely. we appreciate you. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. Yeah. And Jay, um, to bring it back to you, I know you offered a bit of a strategic perspective from the organization standpoint at the beginning, but you have a little bit of a, a personal stake in this as well. Could you share a little bit about your experience too? I do, but I don't want to have to speak after Hope. She was very articulate and, and, and funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so now I'm speaking to you as a uh, supporter of LVS, not, 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 a, not as a board member. And I probably should take my jacket off, but that would take too much time. So I'll give a little bit of background like, like, like Hope did. Um, so my wife and I, we had a, uh, an estate plan. So we, we already had one. And I, we also had some trepidation because, like I said, we already had an estate plan. So we, we thought we had things covered. But I personally wanted to understand the process a, a, a bit more. Um, and I, as I thought about it, it had been a number of years since we'd put our estate plan in place. It had been five, maybe seven years. And I thought it would be helpful to have experts look at the plan because Thompson Associates has, has access to uh, a number of experts. And frankly, when I learned that there'd be no cost to us, that made it easy to, to say, well, sure, let's, let's do one meeting. And as I mentioned, um, we had some trepidation, but I convinced my wife that, hey, if we just do, let's just do one meeting. Worst case, cost us an, an hour or so. Uh, best case, we learn something. And again, similar to Hope, um, it was a very interesting first meeting and we continued and went, went through the process. And you know, my ultimate goal was to see if we needed to update our estate plan and to learn more about if there are ways to optimize our estate for both our, our children and their families and several nonprofits that uh, my wife and I support. So I just thought I'd, instead of, Hope did a great job of explaining the process. So I'll just tell you what I liked about it. So as I, as I mentioned first, I liked access to experts. Um, I'm surprised those of you that know me. Secondly, I, I liked that there was no obligation, you know, there, there, there was no cost. I didn't feel that pressure of how much am I paying a lawyer for the, these 15 minutes that were, you know, that, that were chit chatting. But I would say the thing I liked the best is I liked the, the, the structure to the process. And those, I, I see some names I recognize on the participants that won't surprise you that, that, that know me. But I, I do like structure and, and, and logic to things. Um, so it wasn't a huge time commitment, but there are questionnaires to fill out that really make you think about things. And, and again, as Hope mentioned, there are questionnaires on values, there are questionnaires on assets. And I would say the best part about it was me filling out the questionnaires individually, my wife doing the same, and then comparing notes. Similar to what, what, what Hope mentioned, not surprised. My wife and I were 80% aligned on, on things that we wanted to do. We weren't 100% aligned. And Beth did a really nice job of facilitating the conversation between us. And then, of course, we had to have further conversations, just the two of us afterwards. But um, it made it very easy to get aligned because we started with the values and then added in the, um, you know, the assets and the various vehicle options. 
So that's that's one of the things I liked the best about it. And I'd say the, the probably the last thing that I liked, well, actually the second to last thing that I liked a lot about it is I learned a number of things about how to optimize our plan that maximizes the amount that goes to our children, their families, and nonprofits that we support. So Beth has a tremendous amount of knowledge and experience with this, and she has access to a team of professional experts, tax experts, legal experts, um, you know, wealth planning experts. And I'll just give you two examples. Many of you may know these, but they were, they were new to me. Uh, the first was we learned that, that which types of accounts or our assets are best suited to give to charity because they minimize the taxes in our states. So we were pretty easily able to change a few things that actually causes a tax advantage and gets and it benefits um, several nonprofits. Secondly, we also learned about other vehicles. For example, there are options where we could enable our children to have sources of income during their lifetime. And then after, let's just say you know, 30 years, then, then the remainder of those assets could, could then be passed into, into nonprofits. So that we're able to have you know, a legacy in the nonprofits we support while still supporting our children. And so you know, Beth and her team have access to different types of, they're able to explain that there are different types of options that, that, that you can use. And I'll say the best thing is we walked away with specific actions and a plan that my wife and I are now in sync with. Um, so it's, it, I'll just reiterate what, what Hope said. It's, it's a great process. I feel really good about the, the time invested. It was not a burdensome amount of time, but it was a good, you know, it was a good use of time. And I would recommend it as well. You know, worst case, you'll learn something. Best case, you'll have an updated plan that, 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 uh, that realizes what you want to do with your legacy. Jay, thank you so much. Um, it's important, I think, to know that um, this is something that our leaders aren't just conceptually behind as an idea, um, but that are, are personally invested in as well. So um, we thank you not only for your leadership on the board, but for your and Kristen's um, personal time that you have invested in the process as well. Um, so thank you for that. Um, you've heard a little bit this evening about uh, a panelist that we were hoping to have with us uh, today. And so, um, unfortunately, due to unforeseen um, health circumstances, Diane uh, is not able to, to join us, but um, she believes in this strongly and shared some remarks uh, that she wanted us to, to pass along. Um, I'm going to, to read them verbatim from the script that she provided and um, do my best to not get emotional as I go through and, and read them. Um, they're very sincere. <clears throat> Brian and I have always been active in our community. So when we moved to South Carolina over 25 years ago, the local Lions Club was a perfect fit. I met Daniel during the time I was board chair and was thrilled when he brought his talents to the CEO position. We've worked together since then on a few things. So when Daniel called a while back wanting to talk about something new, we readily agreed, knowing there was likely going to be an ask. And there was, but not what we expected. He explained that LVS is working with Thompson & Associates, with Beth, uh, to assist folks with their end of life or estate planning. There would be no cost to us and the advantage to LVS would be the hope that folks, especially Lions, would remember LVS as a part of their planned giving. That sounded to me just about as much fun as attending the reading of an insurance policy. But I can't say no to Daniel, so we agreed, and one evening, Daniel and Beth came for dinner, and Beth explained it all to us. We agreed to go through the process for three reasons. The first had to do with where we were in our life cycles. Talking about wills and estate planning reminded us that we had not given any of that a thought since 2010 when we went to Australia. Before that trip, we updated everything. Since then, we really hadn't given it a thought except to say we should think about it. What we had was a fairly boilerplate uh, and not much thought uh, that went into it. <clears throat> Our family dynamics have changed so much since then, and it didn't take much discussion to realize those documents really didn't reflect our wishes, and time has marched on. Our youngest son is turning 50, and our only grandchild is turning 21. We really had a lot to talk about. What exactly would happen when the first of us passes? What do we want for each heir, if anything? And what is the best way to maximize their inheritance? 
Are there other family members or people we need to consider? Should we put the burden of being an executor or a trust administrator on our children? How do we want our most precious belongings like wedding rings and other jewelry divided? It's not that we didn't already know these decisions needed to be addressed. The whole thing just seemed so onerous and we really didn't know exactly where to start. This opportunity really came at the right time. We're both in our late 70s, and while we are blessed with comparatively good health, there have been a few challenges and scares. And so with a considerable amount of trepidation, a better word might be dread, we began working with Beth. We quickly saw that this was not only Beth's job, but also her passion. She worked with us through every step of the process, and it was a process where each step led so logically to the next one. Beth was so patient as we worked through all of this. There was never any pressure to meet a deadline. In fact, we probably have taken longer than any other client to get to the end. Beth has been nothing but supportive through our extended vacations, family issues, and busy schedules. Now, I won't kid you, we put in some work. For us, many of these decisions were easy. We agreed that our number one goal was not to save everything to leave to our kids. We worked hard, were blessed with some success, and are comfortable. We want to enjoy the fruits of our labor, so to speak, and split whatever is left among our family and organizations special to us. And then some decisions were more difficult. Do we leave each child the same? Through the years, one son has received much more support from us. Our oldest will be wise with whatever he receives, and the youngest will likely spend it as fast as he can. So what is fair? How will the trust work for our grandson? Besides our church, which organizations do we want to support? Once we made all those decisions, Beth provided several options for how our wishes could be structured into our wills to the best tax advantage for everyone involved. Beth encouraged us to review the other legal documents that are normally grouped in wills like durable power of attorney, medical power of attorney, advanced medical directive. We did make some changes to them as well. Now I'm happy to say we're in the final stages of the process and have met with our attorney to create all of the legal documents. I will say he was very happy to receive the summaries provided by Beth's company. It's a huge weight lifted to have completed our estate planning. Now, no matter what happens, we know our current wishes are well thought out and documented. I'm so relieved to have this done and so glad Daniel introduced us to Beth and her company. And a super added bonus is that I've gained a friend in Beth along the way. And oh yes, have also been introduced to Wingard Good Daddy Barbecue Sauce, which her husband's family makes. The second reason I agreed to this process is my desire to personally make a difference. Call it a legacy. In this month of January, we celebrate George Washington, the father of our country, and Martin Luther King Jr., the leader of the civil rights movement. Two great men whose actions continue to impact each of us today. And that is a rare thing. Now, I'm pretty sure my name won't be in any history books as the years pass, but I absolutely believe I have an opportunity every day to positively impact someone else's life and I can use my financial resources to do the same. I give a portion of those resources now to causes dear to me. By leaving a part of my estate to them, I help to assure their survival. And by doing that, my influence lives on. <clears throat> the final reason I agreed to this process has to do with LVS itself. My relationship with LVS, my belief in its mission, my sense of responsibility as a lion, and my desire to see it continue. Lions have long been committed to the charge Helen Keller gave our organization. The first iteration of LVS was formed 55 years ago because South Carolina's clubs realized they could each fund eye exams and glasses in their respective areas, but they individually could not address the larger needs. We all understand these needs are only going to grow. And so LVS has grown and still is growing to meet those challenges. All those lions 55 years ago were no different than you and I. Ordinary people coming together to create something extraordinary. And lions just like us have supported its growth since that time. I have a sense of ownership in LVS. 
yes, LVS is my organization. And if you're a lion, it's yours too. We can all be proud of its history and its future plans. And I want to do my part to ensure its existence beyond my lifetime. I can tell you no remarks that I have worked on for this program can encapsulate our heart for this effort better than Diane's. And so Diane, we deeply miss your presence, but your words resonate awfully deeply with us. Um, we hope that you will um, take this opportunity to commit to your second century of service. Um, I don't take for granted the trust that you all have invested in me as the CEO of this organization and in our board of directors as its strategic governors. Uh, and we picked Beth and Thompson and Associates um, because they share our values, because they share our commitments. And uh, we hope that they will get the chance to meet your family and to share your values as well. So I hope you will join us in enshrining Helen Keller's charge in your legacy. Um, we're going to leave you with a form that you can um, fill out that just requires your name and a phone number and email if you're ready to take the next step uh, to meet with Beth and to see if this is a process that you would like to engage with. Um, there's no commitment, and no obligation, and no charge to you. And nobody need know anything about it if you want to keep it completely confidential. So uh, we hope that you will um, take advantage of that. Um, that link is going to be um, dropped in the chat and it will also be sent in the follow-up email for this as well. Um, so with that, um, we have a couple of questions that we have not yet addressed as we come kind of to the end of the formal program here. Um, we want to make sure that we open things up for those of you that are on the call uh, to share your questions as well. Um, we did get one question from the audience tonight to please tell us more about um, Thompson and Associates. And so uh, if you feel that we have not sufficiently addressed that question already with our remarks, um, please prompt us and we'll be happy to let Beth talk a little bit more um, about them. Um, but a couple other questions that I wanted to specifically address. Um, <clears throat> Jay Odell, this first question is for you. Um, are you ready to become a lion yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for a hundred more people to ask me. <laughs> okay. All right. You heard him folks. There's a hundred more people. So uh, we'll, we'll watch the chat fill up here in just a minute. <laughs> uh, very good. The other question that was sent in ahead of time. Um, and I think this is uh, an interesting question because it reflects the strategic nature of how we framed our program tonight, really about how LVS is going to grow and achieve its mission moving forward. Can LVS help eliminate the high cost of prescriptions and move toward a European model? That's a direct quote from the question. Jay, would you like to take a stab at that first or would you, um, how, how would you like to divide that one up? I'm gonna let you take that one, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might pass that one back to me. Um, <clears throat> so, our mission at Lions Vision Services is to empower the blind and visually impaired in underserved South Carolina communities to live safe, meaningful, and fulfilling lives. Any program or service or initiative that we pursue uh, is pursued through that lens. Um, there's a lot of need out there and our niche is eye care. Our niche is Helen Keller's legacy. Um, so as it relates to the prescriptions uh, that are tied to eye care, um, we certainly already have um, worked somewhat with our eye care professionals to secure discounts and samples for our clients um, when they go through a surgery um, and can't afford those uh, eye drops or medications that they have to take um, following the surgery. So we're doing a little bit of that now um, to help uh, address prescriptions specifically related to eye care for our clients. Um, as far as how much we could expand that in other programs, it's got to be through that lens of our mission and how it helps us empower the blind and visually impaired. All right, Jay, uh, there's another question in the chat here. Are you ready to be a lion? <laughs> Here we go. One down, 99 to go. 99 more to go, folks. Keep them coming in. I'm going to keep a tally running on this. Yeah. 
please feel free to drop any other questions that you might have in the chat. Um, Beth, is there anything else that you would like to share about Thompson and Associates as a company and why this work matters to you? Well, I, I think you've touched on a few things. You know, I, I don't often think things are coincidence in our lives. And I look back many, many years ago to um, several experiences that I think prepared and led me right up to this moment. And to hear from those of you that I've met with, um, share what this has meant to you and, and in your lives and, and in your family. I'm, I've tried not to get too emotional on this call. Um, I am a professional, but it's been very personal to me. And so each individual family that I meet with, you have that full commitment and that full engagement with me and use me. Um, allow me to be a resource in your life um, and a way to provide information that really can help you move forward. Um, I think that's an important aspect of what we do. Um, and Jay touched on this as well, as did, you know, both of our other other guests. But uh, we do these things with a purpose uh, to give you enough time to really think through each step um, and specific things that that you need to come to conclusions about. And oftentimes you're doing that as a pair. Um, sometimes you may be sorting that out with the counsel of a friend, um, but coming to decisions about your plan that really reflect who you are and how you've lived your life um, and being true to that. And so, you know, it's a joy to see those light bulb moments happen as we go through that together on that journey. Um, and come to a place where you can feel really, really good about what you've decided to do, have that peace and satisfaction that you've done the right thing. And um, I say this every time I have an audience, so I will uh, maybe close this on this thought, but I do believe fully, because I've seen it, that having a well thought out estate plan and communicating that to your family is one of the most loving things you can do for them. And so um, take the time, make the time to make that a priority. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. That's wonderful. Very well said. Um, we, we do have uh, one more question in the chat here and uh, we're, we're picking up a, a pattern and um, this is getting interesting. The, the charge is expanding. Uh, there is an individual that would like to invite Jay and Beth to become lions. So, Beth, which uh, how many how many requests will will you take before you <laughs> <laughs> sign up to join again? <laughs> well, I know one other of the attendees on the call has has uh, led the charge in that previously. So it's certainly on my mind. Um, I'm praying for some space in my life to do that. So, yes, in in due time, I would I would love to be very much involved. I can well, understand. In all series, I, I do introduce myself as a future lion too. <laughs> there you go. There it's just you a go. matter of time. <laughs> Beth, I think this would be a good question for you. Um, who should never be your trustee? Mm, that is a tough one, Daniel. Um, the thing that I often encourage families to think about when they're looking at who those decision makers should be, those individuals that hold that uh, special position in the life of a family, there's a reason the word is called trustee. Um, essentially, you're giving that authority to an individual or uh, maybe a pair of individuals or an organization that you find to be trustworthy. Um, they're not acting as your attorney, in fact, the way that a power of attorney might, um, but they are serving in that trusted role that they will faithfully follow your documents, um, the plan that you have um, put your heart into and worked hard to develop, and it is their role to faithfully steward that. Um, and it's a huge responsibility. And sometimes family members don't want to carry that. They may not like the tension between themselves and another loved one. Um, so you always, that's why when I said, I encourage you to talk to your family about your plan. If you thought about appointing someone in your family to serve as a trustee, um, I think it's quite important that you have that conversation and they understand what they're agreeing to do. 
Um, and sometimes when you have more than one person, it can be a good check and a balance, but it also might make things a little challenging. So there is always that option of a third party. Um, the nice thing about that is that they are absolutely objective. They have to be. It's a black and white matter to them. They don't have that emotional context. Um, so there can be value in looking to a third party. Um, typically, you might think about providing some remuneration to the person carrying that responsibility. Um, so similarly, you would do that in the case of a, you know, a third party trustee. So those are considerations that you really want to weigh heavily when you're going into that. But you probably don't want someone that you feel might not really truthfully um, fulfill the intent and the purpose of, of that document. Again, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> Please keep that right. in mind. Let me make that full. No, nothing said tonight is or should be construed as any legal or financial advice that you should act upon. Consult with your appropriate legal and financial and professional advisors. <laughs> Correct. Should put that disclosure at the opening remarks. Beth, uh, this is probably for you, but Jay, I would uh, be happy to hear your take on this as well. Uh, what if I don't have an attorney or financial advisor uh, to begin the process? Is that a requirement? Not to begin the process at all. Um, and in fact, I think you'll find it will be quite helpful to go through that. And then you have everything prepared. And as, as each of our um, testimonials spoke to you this evening, you do receive a packet at the end of the process. Um, it's typically about maybe 12 to 20 pages in length, depending on your needs um, and your original documents as well. So you get to take those with you when you do set up those appointments. Um, if you don't have an advisor, um, we have some that are very familiar with our process. Now we have more of them I'm learning um, that we could certainly connect you with, um, you know, and, and give you a list of different ones, maybe that. Um, would understand more the preparation that you've already put in and value that. Um, and we'd be glad to do that if you need that assistance and in, in locating someone that you can work with, um, you know, be it any kind of advisor or, um, or an, an estate planning attorney. I'll just add, I think the process works both ways. You heard that from the, the, mm -hmm. the testimonials tonight. Like we had an estate plan. Um, I liked that Beth had her team actually look at our state plan to see if we were missing anything. I was pretty sure it was pretty exhaustive, but it was nice to have an expert look at it and, and conclude that. And then it can work if you don't have one, then you can also, it can also be the starting point to hand it to someone. Mm -hmm. It works both ways. Absolutely. Yeah. I know we're coming up on the hour here, so I think this will be our last question. Um, do you find situations where the spouses have dramatically different ideas concerning their estate? Yes. <laughs> to answer that, we do see that from time to time. Um, so when we first get together, one of the things we'll talk through um, is the nature of the relationship that I have with the organization with LBS, but also the nature of the relationship that I have with you as my planning clients, which is separate and, and different. Um, and we do look at planning, not just for you as a couple, but planning for you as individuals. And so there may be instances where the planning might look a little different on both sides, um, where it's not necessarily a consensus, but perhaps um, a different path. And we do see that from time to time, indeed. Um, so we want to take that into consideration that you may have some different goals and objectives from each other, and we'll respectfully walk through that um, that process, those conversations, and um, ensure that the outcome that you come to um, in as much as possible uh, satisfies both desires um, and meets those basic um, objectives that you might, you would share where you do have, you know, do have that common ground. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Beth. Um, thank you, Beth and Jay. And Thank you so much to our guests, uh, Hope Barbary, as well as um, Diane Papool, um, virtually. We appreciate everybody's participation tonight. And thank you for listening and sticking with us. We really appreciate your time. Uh, we hope that this has prompted some curiosity and some interest. And we hope that you might consider beginning your second century of service uh, with us to carry Helen Keller's legacy forward um, for the years and decades ahead where this need will be greater uh, than it has ever been. 
um, please reach out to us at any time. You can email me directly at daniel at sitefirst.org. You can also find out more at lionsvisionservices.org under ways to give. You can visit our planned giving page. Be on the lookout for a follow-up email with the recording from today's event, as well as um, the link to that sign-up form to complete um, any next steps that you might like. And we hope that we will get to see you in a meeting uh, with Beth very, very soon. Thank you so much. Well, please check, care the and have a great check the chat as well. We just sent through that link. Um, so if you would like to go ahead and touch on that meeting form, it's right there. So I'll leave it up a few seconds longer if anyone wants to click over to that. Um, and then, as Daniel said, it'll come out in subsequent um, email fashion as well, along with the recording. Thank you, everybody. Good night and stay warm. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great night.